Hey, this is Matthew from Nerd News Today, and joining me on the other side of the screen, you know him as the man behind the toys that made us, and you're about to know him as the man who has brought to us a new Dungeons & Dragons documentary, along with some other cool stuff coming up soon. That man is Mr. Brian Volkweiss. Brian, how's it going today? Good! How you doing? Thank you for having me back. No problem. Now, we got a lot to discuss since last time we spoke to you. There's a lot of stuff happening now with the toys that made us. You've got uh, some other stuff in the works as well. You're company has released a new uh, documentary so let's let's start things off with that in fact uh you guys just acquired uh, recently and released the eye of the beholder which is a dungeons yes. and dragons documentary it's all about the art yes. and the history of the art behind that role-playing game so what can you tell us about this documentary and how did you guys get your hands on it so uh very luckily i think about four years ago i and i think it was it was usa today i read an article about this documentary called Plastic Galaxy, which was all about Star Wars toys. So I reached out to the guy who made it, a guy named Brian Stillman, and he and I became friends. Unfortunately, that movie was already spoken for. Another distributor got it, and we weren't really a distributor back then. So we didn't get the movie, but I got to know Brian. Brian Stillman uh, was one of the first people I called after Toys That Made Us was greenlit, uh, Brian basically acted as our, more than an advisor on the Star Wars episode, and then, you know, worked, he, he basically worked on the whole series. It started with Star Wars, but he ended up working on everything, every episode practically, and also a lot of other shows that we've made, Brian has worked on as well. Uh, in addition to Star Wars, Brian is a huge uh, Dungeons and Dragons aficionado. Uh, he's kind of a famous uh, dungeon master. And um, as he does once or twice a year, he self-produced uh, a documentary that was all about the art of Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I have to tell you, uh, personally, me growing up, uh, I did not know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, in fact, the majority of what I do know uh, comes from Eye of the Beholder and knowing Brian Stillman. Uh, my friend Tyson had a book called Unearthed Arcana, uh, which forever I thought was Unearthed Antarctica. Uh, <laughs> and same it was thing. Brian who actually corrected me. Uh, so that was really my D&D &D knowledge. And then uh, Brian brought the movie to us, and he had trust in us because of the relationship we've had over the last two years. And he was very good, and uh, he let us release it. And uh, I believe he's very happy. What I love about Brian, you never have to know if he's happy or not, because he will tell you. And he has gone out of his way to tell me again and again and again how happy he is with the job we did releasing Eye of the Beholder. And I can't get into any numbers or anything, but it has done very well, very well. That's good to hear. I checked it out myself. I watched it. I really, really enjoyed it too. Yeah. Uh, I really, really liked seeing the history, the progression of the artwork throughout basically day one of D&D. Uh, &D, and then as they go on, getting better artists and so on and so forth. Uh, I just, you know, being an artist myself also, I just really enjoyed seeing that progression and how everything just worked out to the point where we are today. Uh, now, you as a, I guess in this case, we'll call you a D&D &D noob since this is probably the most exposure you've had to in a long time. Yes. Um, yes. What, what did you learn about uh, the world of D&D &D and the world of the D&D &D art through this documentary? Well, I mean, about D and D. I mean, the whole Gygek story. Uh, that story is amazing. I mean, just absolutely amazing. And I've actually now, through somebody else, I can't say who, because he would be mad at me. I have seen the original hand drawn on legal paper book that would become the first handmade, hand sold dungeon guide one or whatever it is. I, and I've seen some of Gydex dice that he personally used. Someone else I know has them. So, so funny. In any other business, I'd get in trouble for not giving credit to people for what they have or do. But in this toy world, you have to be very careful uh, sometimes about not giving credit because people don't want people to know they have it. I literally got something from somebody once recently, and the guy gave it to me and was like, dude, if you post a picture of this on Instagram, don't tell anybody I gave it to you. And I'm like, why? I want to thank you. He's like, man, so many people would be mad 
that I gave it to you and not them. Which, by the way, also made me feel good about the price I had paid. Because that said, I probably could have paid a lot more and I was given a real fair deal. But anyway, as it relates to the artwork, I learned a lot about the artwork because I didn't know anything about the artwork uh, as it relates to Dungeons and Dragons. I just took it for granted. So I'd say the main thing that I learned was the artwork had originally gone from just being like something you normally do. There's artwork on the cover of a book and whatever to becoming a huge part of D&D. And people were getting into the art as much as they were the actual D&D. &D. And like that had become like a thing. So that was probably the thing I learned the most. And again, if I'm going to be completely honest, when Brian first told me he was doing a, D a documentary about the artwork of D&D, &D, I was like, hey, you know, what do I know? But why don't you just do a documentary about D&D? &D? And he was like, well, it's been done before. It's been done now. Nobody's covered the artwork, and it's a great story. And you know what? He was right. It's a great story. It's a very interesting story. Yeah, just seeing, again, the whole history of it. It's uh, really exciting to watch that progress just right before your eyes. Uh, and you mentioned other D&D &D docs out there, and I was going to ask you. I mean, uh, me personally, I've tried to watch a few, and there's, I feel like there's not that many out there. Like, there are some. In fact, uh, I remember a while back I watched the one about Andrew Pekorvi, who uh, owns Dwarven Forge, which is a really interesting documentary as well. But uh, from my perspective, I feel like there's a deficit of docs about this very popular subject. I mean, do you agree with that sentiment? And if you do, I mean, why do you think there's just not that much D&D docs out there? Uh, I completely agree. Uh, there are two right now being made that will change everything. Uh, and then the answer is it takes a while for Hollywood to understand how big something is. I think the time between something being big and it being exploited properly has shrunk because of the success of Marvel movies. But I still think that I still think that people do not understand how big D&D &D is or magic. A, B, I would also say there is still a, a stigma to D&D &D and magic that has since been erased from Marvel and Star Wars. Um, so I think because of Marvel and, of course, how J.J. Abrams' new Star Wars movie, I think Star Wars and Marvel fandom and geekdom has been changed and made cool. I don't think that has affected D&D, &D, partly because at the end of the day, everybody can relate to watching a movie because they do it no matter what they watch. It still seems a little unusual, and maybe even I would use the word weird, about a bunch of people sitting around a table with dice. and Like, it's just, most people haven't done that. Uh, I guarantee you that perception will change over the next three to five years, forever, in the for better. But I think that's a part of it. So now the most important question of this entire interview, has Brian taught you to play D&D &D yet, and have you actually rolled the dice and done any of it? Uh, he has not, and I have not, though, A, it's purely due to logistics. Like, he's invited me to games, and I just, he was here in L.A. doing a big game, and I flew out the night he was doing the game. So that's the first. So I really want to do it. I'm very curious to see it, because when I played it when I was a kid, just to be clear, we had unearthed Arcana. We had nothing else. We literally had no dungeon guy. Like, we didn't know what we were doing. We were making up the rules. So I've never really played the right way. But what Brian did do for me is he has gotten me obsessed with this character called the Owlbear. Oh, yes, the Owlbear. The Owlbear. That's like the best creature out there. I love the Owlbear. And he has gotten me obsessed with the Owlbear. All right, well, hopefully one of these days we can get like a, maybe a, a talking owlbear. You could be that character if you want. You could play him in D&D. &D. I, I, I would love that. So you've also got Discontinued on the CW right now. How has that show been going? How's, been, how's the reception been? And uh, yeah, just tell us all about it, please. Well, the reception went great. It, it's called a backdoor pilot. And what that means is you make it, they air it. And if it does well, then you get to make more, which is what's happening. So only the pilot is on Amazon Prime. So it's one 22-minute episode. And the premise is 
I've always been fascinated by discontinued things. Like I love that either A, something you're familiar with your entire life, boom, is gone. You can't do it anymore. So I've always found that interesting. But I've always found it interesting to find stuff that existed before I was born that was discontinued to be like, wow, what was that like? And why did it get discontinued? I, I'm a, this is going to sound very strange to you, but I've always been very interested in and I've always been a student of failure. I have always found failure very interesting. And it's basically a comedic, fun show that's basically about failure. Um, and we really do a deep dive into, but in a very funny way, why did something that worked for 93 years not make it to 94 years? But it's all pop culture. It's all stuff you've heard of from Blockbuster to the Sears catalog to the Humvee to Toys R Us. So it's all stuff you've heard of. Um, and stuff where, similar to Toys That Made Us, stuff where you may think you know why it went away is not why it went away. Well, talking about Toys R Us, that one stings right here. But uh, oh. now i got to just make a comment to you on that shirt you're wearing. I really am loving the Alana Glazer shirt. And let's talk about that a little bit, too, because you're doing a whole bunch of comedy specials right now, including, uh, I believe you just did one with Alana. Uh, so can you tell That's us what's on the pipe with that? Last night. <laughs> Literally, last night we shot it. We got back this morning at uh, 9.30 in the morning. You just did something that cracks me up, and I love when people do this. You just said... You're doing a lot of stand-up comedy right now. Some people have even said to me, and this is my favorite thing in the world to hear, um, yeah, I saw your name on a stand-up special, and that seemed a bit random. So what I love is stand-up comedy has been my bread and butter for about 15 years. Yep. <laughs> I just started doing Toys That Made Us in this popular historical history culture less than three years. But the people that have met me through Toys That Made Us, they're like, wow, what's all this stand-up comedy? So, I remember seeing that when I first looked up your IMDb page for, I think for our first interview. I was like, there's tons of comedy specials, nothing geeky here at all. This is so bizarre. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. so that, uh, that's a big part of it. But yeah, it, uh, we're doing more than ever, and in my opinion, at a higher level than ever. And uh, we shot Alana last night, or Alana last night for, uh, for Amazon. It's one of their first original specials, and uh, it, I, I truly believe it'll be one of the best specials of at least the last 10 years, uh, a, a cultural changing and defining special. So is this going to be purely her doing stand-up, or will it be skits, interviews? What can you tell us about this show? If All stand-up. All okay. stand-up. And brilliant material. Brilliant. And obviously, since you guys just shot this, I know this is kind of like throwing a dart blindly at a wall, but can you tell us any information about a possible release time, time period, no. any, anything? Not at all. I have to ask. It's I, my job. No one knows. I mean, like Toys That Made Us season three, I know that, but I can't tell you for legal reasons and other stuff. On Alana Glazer, nobody knows. I don't know. Amazon doesn't know. Nobody knows right now. Like, we haven't even downloaded the data from the cameras into our company storage site that's how new it is well thankfully you just mentioned toys that made us and i don't even have to ask that question now since we clearly cannot discuss that but uh well i can tell you one thing and you are literally possibly the first person i'm saying this to publicly it's gonna be before october all right we will take that that's all i can say all right that's good enough that's something i mean uh, you know, we talked last time about the toys that made us season three coming up. Uh, and so now we know the release date is going to be this year at some point. Uh, but yes. can you just remind our viewers, uh, just which four toy lines you're going to be covering in these new episodes. My little pony, power Rangers, teenage mutant Ninja turtles and wrestling. Now, of course this is seeing way beyond the stuff that's coming out, hopefully in the fall, but have you guys started filming anything for the next season? No comment. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> A lot of rules. A lot of rules. I got to follow a lot of rules. So I apologize. I don't think I'm being evasive because no. I'm telling you directly, no comment. But I do have to be a little evasive. Oh, I, I totally understand. This is part of the job. I, I have to ask the questions I already know the answers to. Um, but I'm going to try and squeeze some information out. Maybe I can see if I can get anything out of you. Uh, All right. Can, can you give it. us any hints of who you spoke to, uh, perchance? 
I can. There's no reason I can't. It's just uh, my memory is not great in general. I'm jet lagged like a mofo. Uh, and the last interview we did for season three, the first interview we did for season three was over a year ago. Mm. The last interview was at least three months ago. So there's no secret reason for me not to tell you. I'm just not great with names. Let me try and jog your memory a little bit. Uh, yeah. In particular, with the wrestling episode, because I'm very interested in seeing that one. Uh, did you talk to Zack Ryder or Kurt Hawkins at all? We did, but for reasons I cannot get into, we are not able to use the footage, unfortunately. All right, that's unfortunate. Did you at least get to see his collection? Yes. All right, well, I'm jealous just based on that alone. So. <laughs> it's uh, most impressive. All right, well, uh, since there's not really too much else I can pull from you out of this, we'll have to just wait and see, and it's going to be... We waited this long. We can wait a little bit longer. It's totally fine. I'll, I'll be cool. I'll be cool. I can tell you one thing that is part me trying to give you something that you didn't ask and part like 2% a shameless plug. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so we had the DVD for seasons one and two come out a month ago. Did great, to put it mildly. Uh, we're already going into the third printing and it's only been out for about five weeks. Oh, congrats. But we have a Blu-ray coming out on Black Friday, and that, if you have not bought the DVD, I advise you not to, because you'll be mad that you bought it, and then the DVD's come, the Blu-ray's coming, but that is chock full of extras. The other thing, here's something else I can tell you that I have not told anybody. Uh, we are doing comic, San Diego Comic-Con again this year. I was just going to ask you about that. Very big room, very big room, uh, and we have... Uh, we believe we will have some pretty good announcements. All right. Well, I wish I was there, uh, and hopefully some of you guys out there watching today will be there to see Brian and to hear whatever amazing announcements that he's not going to tell us today because he has to keep these things secret. But nonetheless, I, I know it's the worst part of Join the job. Us. Join us. <laughs> next year, hopefully I will. I'd like to get out there. I haven't done San Diego before, so I'm hoping next year I can finally do it, 2020. But I'm knocking on wood. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of feedback on social media. Have there been any requests that you've seen recur for this show? Yeah, the number one request is Hot Wheels. Number two is Dungeons and Dragons. Number three is like Batman slash Super Friends, Superpowers. So those are the top. Honorable mention is Ghostbuster Toys. Uh, we get a lot about that. Uh, we get a fair amount about Cabbage Patch Kids and um, the band. Oh, Jim. 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 Yeah. So we get those. Those are really the ones we hear about the most. Oh, and of course, everybody wants us to make a second Star Wars episode, oh, which course. will not happen. <laughs> that will not happen. Though on the Blu-ray, there's a lot of Star Wars stuff that didn't make it into the episode. And we'll talk about that Blu-ray in a little bit. Now, uh, last time we spoke, you uh, showed off some of your toy collection, and I just got to know: uh, Have there been any new additions to your toy collection? Oh. Dude, too many. So part of what I've been doing this year, and it's funny, I've always done this, but I've never done it on Instagram. So it's been interesting because it's just amazing what social media can do connecting dots. But I, you know, I, I've been much more aggressive about finding new toy stores that I've never gone to before. So like I've always gone to the same toy stores in Chicago or in Portland or whatever, but like now I'm really trying to find a new vintage store anytime I travel for the stand-up business or whatever. I went to an amazing store yesterday in Houston called Misfit Toys TX, uh, amazing store. So I mean, just yesterday I bought five or six new things. So I mean, I my my collection is growing faster than it ever has. Uh, it's good and bad. I finally got the G.I. Joe hovercraft, the whale, this year. Congratulations. That's one of the best. It's finally off the list. Uh, that was a grail. Uh, I've got some other pretty cool Dune stuff this year that I never got before. Uh, some prototypes. I got the very rare Dune pillowcase and sheets uh, that are like almost impossible to find. I did get something super cool I'm excited to talk about. Uh, it's not really a toy, but it's related, if you don't mind. Go for it, yeah. I was in a toy-focused 
thrift store here in Burbank. So just to be clear, not a flea market in Albuquerque or a flea market in Montana. I'm literally in a store in Burbank, which is the two of the four major studios are here of vintage toys and pop culture. I go there about once a month for 10, 15 years. I see on a shelf a mug for Star Trek Seven, <laughs> And I, I did like a double take. I almost didn't buy it. it. It was just so weird. I bought it for $8. Luckily, I now have this huge network and I can just text a picture and everyone like, anybody know what this is? Sure enough, Paramount was trying to get uh, – buzz going for Star Trek 7 internally at Paramount hmm. and they made mugs and uh, beach towels to try and get the different departments excited it did not get made as we all know it would become it would, you know 10 years later it would be called Star Trek Generations that would be technically the seventh movie but I mean I have had two offers for thousands of dollars wow to buy the mug yeah Oh, I'm jealous. It was so surreal. Well, that, since the last time we spoke, uh, I actually got into the Star Trek proto game myself. I ended up picking up a few uh, test shots get? and a few hard copies. Uh, I'll share those off camera because, you know, again, we talked about the toy black market where you can't really save where you got yeah. things from. Or I'll show you those uh, later on. And uh, sorry, guys at home, you won't be able to see them this time around. But you'll see them soon enough on Trek Back Tuesday. Um, but nice. since we're talking about stores. Um, being the international man of mystery that you are, what are your top stores around the country that you like to go to or that are just some of your favorite places that you've been to for buying toys, vintage or new? So I can't say my favorite. Or else we'll start tagging it. a few favorites. One of my favorites, Billy Galaxy store in Portland, Oregon. Billy Galaxy. That's what the store is called, Billy Galaxy. Kapow in Chicago. Absolutely love Kapow. Kapow was great. Time Bomb in Minneapolis is awesome. So Billy Galaxy in Portland, Kapow in Chicago, and uh, Time Bomb in Minneapolis. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And I also, like I said, I love the Misfit Toys I just went to in Houston, Texas. Wonderful. And by the way, not only do these stores all have in common great selection and really cool stuff, not only do they have fair, reasonable prices, the people that work there are wonderful. They're nice. They're helpful. Uh, they're informative. They've got good sense of humors. Like, I've been to some great stores, but the people that work there aren't that nice or they're not that helpful or they're just kind of jerks. Um, all the four stores I just said, very cool and nice. I was just in California for the Ghostbusters Fan Fest. I'm going to throw a store out there, too, for anybody out there. Is in California in Culver City. Uh, I just went to Big Lou's Toys and Collectibles, which is on uh, Sepulveda Boulevard. I don't remember the number. Uh, it's actually not far from Pulp Fiction Comics, which was a really great comic store. Uh, amazing selection of trades, graphic novels from the big guys and all the indie guys. And just a few miles further down is Big Lou's. Uh, they have a really eclectic selection of a lot of different stuff, just all sorts of things, really good prices. Uh, and they have stock car racing there, which is really bizarre. Like They have little RC cars <laughs> and a track for it. It's, it's bizarre, but I loved it. In two weeks, I will have lived here for 20 years. I've never even heard of Big Lou's. Well, there you go. And I'm doing a show at Sony right now, which is in Culver City. So I'm down there all the time. I now have something to do after my meeting. There you go. And it's right across the street from Jack in the Box. So you got food and toys. What more do you need? I love it. All right, so aside from the toys that made us, aside from the comedy specials, and aside from Eye of the Beholder, which is available right now, what else does the Nacelle Company have in store for 2019? Uh, well, Discontinued is on Amazon Prime now. It premiered on CW. We're making more of those right now. Uh, we have – we ha I got to tell you this again, not to be cryptic or a jerk, but we have, uh, we have a couple of huge things uh, in pre-production right now that – you're going to love. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to get cocky. or, or I'm pretty sure you're going to love. We have a huge show coming out on History Channel later this year about President Grant. Uh, six episodes, three episodes, two hours each, six hours long. 
That's coming. We have another big show about to get announced on Netflix. Uh, reality show. Very, very big. Uh, very big piece of talent. So, yeah, we got a lot going on. But as always, it's just uh, I, I just got to be careful what I talk about or not talk about. But I, I would love if everybody watched Discontinued now that it's on Amazon Prime because not everybody has CW. Only the pilots there. But like I said, we are making more. I'm very proud of the show. All right, so Brian, thank you so much for your time. This I know you can't give out a ton of information on things, but you've given us more than enough to whet our appetites. I am salivating, and I cannot wait for the fall whenever the next season of The Toys That Made Us comes out. I can continue waiting. It hurts me, but I will wait. Uh, but in the meantime, how can we keep up with you and the Nacelle Company? In social media, I'm on Instagram. I try to post anytime I have anything interesting to say or anything interesting I see. I don't post every day because I think that's a great way to bore people. Well, no but breakfast pictures? I try to communicate. Um, and Facebook as well. You can go to Toys That Made Us on Facebook. You can go to the Nacelle Company. Uh, we also own Comedy Dynamics, which is the biggest producer of stand-up comedy. So and any of those are good. All right, well, Brian, thank you so much for your time. And anybody out there who's going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, do make sure to stop in, say hi to Brian. Tell them Nerd News today sent you because why not? So we'll see you guys next time. I'm Matthew from Nerd News Today. That's Brian Volkweiss. Thank you very much.